There's a set of essential contracts that every single business will need during its life cycle. These are not all the contracts under the sun that your business might need, but generally these are contracts that you might find in every single business, if not at least two or one of these contracts. So we're gonna run through them today. The first set of contracts that you might find in businesses that have more than one shareholder, so more than one owner or more than one partner, is a shareholders agreement or a partnership agreement. We did a segment on shareholders agreement a couple of weeks ago, so you could definitely check that segment out if you want more information on shareholders agreements. But what a shareholders agreement is and what a partnership agreement is, is that it's an agreement that covers how a corporation will be governed, how to deal with problematic situations if they arise, and how to deal with all the what if questions in a company. These agreements you'll typically find if you're dealing with a corporation that has more than one shareholder or owner or partner. The next set of contracts that's essential for almost every single business, I would say, is an employment agreement or an independent contractor agreement or both. What these agreements are is essentially exactly what they say they are. Either you are hiring your first employee or you're hiring an independent contractor for your business. We will typically see these agreements when corporations really start to grow and they start to scale their business and they now require more help to be able to conduct their work. And they might go about either hiring an employee or hiring an independent contractor. There's a common myth in business that a handshake deal suffices here. It absolutely does not. It's really important that you have these agreements drafted because the worst thing that could happen is that if you have an employee, you don't have an agreement with them, and then you end up in front of the norms de travail and you're always going by, he said this, she said this, and that's literally one of the worst things. So always make sure to have these agreements in written. I can't stress it enough. An employment agreement should talk about what the person's position is, what their job title entitles, so what actual work will they be doing, how much will you be compensating them, do they receive any benefits, how can you terminate the agreement, how long is the position for, is it indefinite, is it for a year, two years, all that should be in there. The independent contractor agreement is even more important to have in writing, basically because you need to really be able to establish that it's an independent contractor relationship and not an employee-employer relationship. Here you want to talk about in long what that relationship is. So this is an independent contractor relationship. It's not an employer-employee relationship. That should be stated in the contract. You want to talk about the work that the person will be doing, how much you will be paying them for that work, how long will they be working for? So typically we're talking project-based. So is it like one month? Is it just until they finish that project? Who's gonna be covering their expenses? How can you terminate the contract? So this should all be included inside this agreement. These two agreements you'll typically find in almost every single business that starts to grow. So like I said, this is really an essential business contract. The last set of essential business contracts is the sales agreement versus the service agreement depending on the type of business that you're in. The service agreement you'll typically find when you're dealing with a professional, an accountant, a lawyer, a notary. They'll have you sign a professional services agreement. What that is is that you're essentially saying that I'm hiring you to conduct the service and this is the mandate that you're giving me. This could look like an agreement that covers the following things. This is the specific mandate that I'm given. This is how much I'm gonna be compensated for it, plus taxes, plus interest. And you'll always usually have a confidentiality clause and a conflict of interest clause. On the other hand, if you're selling a good, you'll usually have a sales contract. When I say sales contract, don't think automatically a very long nine page agreement. This could even be just clauses on the back of a receipt that you get at a store or just clauses on an invoice. Here, what the sales contract will talk about is exactly what good you bought, how much you paid for it, if there's a delivery associated with it, when will it be delivered, and then you might find some additional clauses like warranties, how can you return it if there's something wrong with it or if you just simply don't like it anymore. All of that will be indicated inside the contract. So like I said, these could be just clauses that you find at the back of the receipt or at the bottom of an invoice or at the bottom of an estimate. And this will just talk about how the relationship will be governed between the parties. These contracts that we talked about today are really the essential business contracts. You can find these in almost every single business but like I said, these are not the end-all be-all contracts that you'll find in every single business. Your business might need other contracts as well. If ever you have any questions, if ever you need help drafting your contracts for your business, please don't hesitate to contact us. It would be our absolute pleasure to help you.